Okay, so the start of today's YouTube video is going to be the Stilo ST5.1 GT SA2020 helmet. Uh, I picked this up over Black Friday 2021. Um, I've been looking and needed a new helmet. My old one is an old SA2010. Um, so it is expired uh, after this year. Uh, little information on the SA ratings. SA stands for Special Applications or Specialty Applications. Uh, they're different than an M rating, which is for a motorcycle. Typically an SA rating is uh, required to have some sort of uh, fire withstanding material inside of it. Um, and it goes through a little bit of a different test process than the M rated helmets that you typically find uh, on motorcycle helmets. So this is not only SA2020 rated, which is the North American standard uh, or technically US standard uh, for certifying and rating helmets, but it's also FIA uh, 8858 certified, which means that it is certified um, <clears throat> for some European series as well. To, essentially, it's a worldwide use helmet. Um, you're not gonna head over to Spa or Hockenheim or Nürburgring and not be able to use this because it's an SA2020. It does carry the FIA certification as well, so you can take it with you wherever you go. This particular helmet is a composite. Stilo also makes the ST5, ST5.1 uh, GT in a carbon, uh, pure carbon fiber material. And the big difference is the shell itself. So on the composite shell, uh, it's a carbon Kevlar composite. So uh, the front of the helmet itself, um, typically the, the crown, the mouthpiece is uh, constructed of Kevlar. Uh, you'll find Kevlar in bulletproof vests and things like that. Uh, the reason that this is constructed of Kevlar is if there's anything that comes into the windscreen, through the windshield, whatever it might be, if you're running open, uh, cockpit vehicles, um, it's designed to withstand uh, uh, quite a brunt object strike or whatever it might be. The side panels of the helmet are constructed of carbon fiber, keeps it stiff, lightweight, and then the back of the helmet, uh, along with all the in-between pieces, are fiberglass. So that is where you get the composite construction of the helmet from. So what does that mean? Uh, from a construction standpoint, the weight still is able to stay lightweight. The shell itself weighs just under three pounds on its own. Um, this helmet without any added features uh, weighs about three pounds, eight ounces. Um, this particular helmet has been fitted with a comms kit. So inside the helmet, it has uh, stereo speakers and it has a, a boom microphone built into it. And with all those accessories, including the Hans anchor posts, uh, this thing comes in at three pounds, 11 ounces. So super lightweight, uh, no real issue with uh, fatigue over time wearing the helmet or anything like that. I comfortably wore this helmet for over an hour uh, just last week. I didn't get hot. Uh, I didn't get a headache, pressure points were non-existent. Um, it's extremely well ventilated. You've got six ports down the center, two off to the side uh, for heat extraction. And then you have um, four vents here across the top, uh, along with two down along the bottom for air intake. Um, this is especially beneficial if you're in an open air vehicle or an open cockpit car, but even in a closed cockpit vehicle, um, the ability to extract heat out of the helmet is uh, essentially really important to keep you cool uh, throughout your session, however long that session might be. Uh, my old helmet here, um, this is a Simpson Bandit, did not have any of those ventilation ports. Uh, I could wear that helmet for about 20 minutes before I got extremely hot, um, <clears throat> maybe about 15. Uh, and about 25 to 30 before I'd actually start getting a headache just because some of the pressure points on it. Anyway, speaking of the side ports that I mentioned, 
Um, this helmet has the ability to have a drink system fitted to either side, doesn't matter, uh, a communication system fitted. Um, on this particular helmet, I had a comm system installed on the right hand side. Uh, I didn't do a drink system, so this side is blank, but I can easily add that in the future. Um, I don't need the air blower kit. Uh, I'm not doing long endurance races or, or anything like that where I'm gonna be stuck in the car for a very long time. So I didn't feel like the drink system or top air blower, especially since I don't have a cold air blower in my car, uh, was really needed for my own. Yours might be different. The comm system is nice being built in because there's no wires that hang off or dangle off or anything like that. Uh, and the Stilo kit has many adapters that you can get. In fact, I have two different adapters. I have a 3.5 millimeter to Stilo adapter. And yes, that is a 3.5 to lightning cable adapter because if you ever just want to wear your helmet and jam out to music, you can plug this into your phone and the speakers work in the helmet just like any other headphones would. Uh, the other adapter that I currently have is a Trackcom Stilo adapter to Trackcom uh, for in-car communications. One of the reasons I opted for the communications port on the right hand side is because I do um, quite a bit of passenger rides when I'm at the track. So it's convenient to have the radio on the right hand side, plug it into the track comm in the middle of the car and uh, the passenger can then connect to the same track comm system and you can hear each other instead of trying to scream through your helmet. Right? So another nice feature about the SA2020, and this is a change that happened with SA2015 helmets, is that the uh, Hans Anchor threads were actually built into the helmet itself. Um, this is an old SA2010 helmet, so mm -hmm. I actually had to uh, drill these holes out and insert a threaded nut on the backside of this helmet, which uh, was not a lot of fun. It wasn't too terribly difficult, but uh, these uh, M6 threads were already built into the helmet, so it's much, much easier to install these Hans tether posts uh, as needed. One of my favorite features of this helmet is actually the visor system. Uh, it does have a pretty wide uh, open port. So it's about 75 millimeters from top to bottom. So you do have a nice wide visual for uh, being able to see. Um, it's, you know, your peripheral vision is not blocked either. It is uh, wide left to right as well as top to bottom. But my favorite part of this helmet uh, regarding the visor anyway, is that uh, it's a click system. So um, single pivot point, they got rid of the two pivot point on the ST4. Uh, but what's nice about this is if you just push this down, you get one click and that'll allow for some air to come through and it won't fly open on you if you do uh, race in an open cockpit vehicle. Um, more importantly for me is that uh, the second click provides an airtight seal uh, around the visor shield, right? So this is important because even in a closed cockpit car, windows down, HPDE event, whatever it might be, time trial, uh, you can get dust and debris and things coming in through the, the side windows of the car. Um, if you're ever in a situation where the car is on fire, uh, this is also an airtight seal and it'll help prevent the fire from getting into your eyes and into your face, your nose, your mouth, and all that stuff. Um, I always, 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 always recommend wearing a balaclava. Um, can't stress enough safety gear and how important it is. Uh, so please buy a balaclava, put it on before you put your helmet on, regardless of whether you're doing HPDE or whether you're doing wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, it's super important. Another thing that I want to mention on the Stilo helmet is the size. So Stilo is known for typically running small. Well, what does that mean? So my Simpson Bandit um, is a medium. The medium comes in at 57 centimeters. Uh, my head shape actually measures 57 centimeters. Yeah, peanut head. So uh, the medium Simpson fit me perfectly at 57 centimeters. 
my recommendation if you're going to get a steel helmet is to go up a size one and a half to two centimeters larger. This helmet is a large 59. So 59 centimeter measurement. This one fits me like a glove. I can't imagine even putting on a 57. I don't think it would fit. Uh, Stilo has lots of different cheek pad options and uh, ear cup options to help you get the perfect custom fit. Uh, but there's just no way that 57 would fit me. So just keep that in mind. If you're typically a 57, go to a 59. If you're typically a 59, uh, I would say try a 60 or even a 61. Um, they do have lots of sizes, intermediate sizes. They have a, a large, which is the uh, 59 that I have. They have a large plus, which is a 60. And then they have the extra large, which is a 61. And I believe they make sizes all the way up to a triple XL. Uh, one thing to keep in mind though, the triple XL is not FIA certified. I don't know if it's because of the testing uh, the, the requirements that the FIA uh, has for the FIA uh, 8858. I don't know if the, just the triple XL shell can't handle it or whatever it might be, but if you have a triple XL size, you might want to look into that depending on the type of events you're doing. If it's HPD, not a problem. If you're doing wheel to wheel racing and it requires an FIA certification, that might be something of concern for you. That's pretty much it. Uh, this wasn't going to be a super long video. Um, it's not a review video. It's more of an overview informational video. Fortunately, I haven't had a chance to use this yet because it is like, I don't know, nine degrees today in Minnesota or wherever it might be. There's snow on the ground, not a whole lot of fun. Um, but I'll eventually uh, get out onto the track. Uh, who knows, maybe I'll head south for some warmer weather in the early months of 2022 and uh, then I will give a report back. Um, I'll for sure have a, a review video probably sometime middle of the year 2022. If you like this video, let me know, give it a like, hit the subscribe button. My channel is typically uh, track content, in-car cameras, some how-to videos here and there. Um, I just decided to do this video because I know a lot of people are in the same scenario that I was in, have an expiring helmet, need a new one, weren't really sure what uh, helmet they should go for. Um, my advice is try them on. If you can, find a local shop, buy from the local shop if you can, um, try on the helmets. Bell makes an excellent helmet, but unfortunately it doesn't fit me. Steel makes a fantastic helmet, but unfortunately it doesn't fit everybody's noggin shape. So uh, my recommendation is go test out the helmets for yourself and see which one fits you best. Um, that's really the, the only way to truly test out a helmet. Uh, you'll know usually right away whether or not it's gonna be a good fit or not. And then if you've got time to kill, I would spend an, uh, an hour or so at the, at the shop that you're at and ask them if you can wear the helmet for 15 minutes at a time and, and really see how, how that works out. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions that I didn't answer, please leave them in the comments. I'm always, always, always answering uh, questions in the comments for my YouTube videos. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, let me know that too. Uh, I can go over my other safety equipment if you'd like. Um, if not, leave it in the comment. Just tell me the STF cube. Uh, anyway, hope you guys have a great day. Love that you're able to join me and I'll see you in the next video.